Mr. P's Science and Math Podcasts. For more science and math concepts, search me out on iTunes by typing Papa Podcasts. You can contact me at papapodcasts at gmail.com. Other Papa Podcast titles include Chemistry Podcasts, Math Podcasts, which look at quadratic functions, polynomials, trigonometry, linear mathematics, and physics podcasts. Thank you for watching. If the instantaneous speed of a car remains the same over a period of time, then we say that the car is traveling at a constant speed. The average speed of an object is the same as its instantaneous speed if the object is traveling at this constant speed. So instantaneous speed is different from constant speed. But of course, if the, um, sorry, the instantaneous speed is different from the average speed. But if the object is traveling consistently, so if, if, imagine you having your car in cruise control. So your car is in cruise control at 100 kilometers per hour and it doesn't change over that period of time that you keep your vehicle at 100 kilometers per hour. If you're keeping that consistent or keeping that as your constant speed, then yes, your instantaneous speed is the same as your average speed. But you can, they can only be the same if you are traveling at a constant speed. Let's look at a couple of sample problems. Sample problem number one, carry rollerblades to school a total distance of 4.5 kilometers. She has to slow down twice to cross busy streets, but overall the journey takes her 0.65 hours. What is Carrie's average speed during the trip? Now, one of the things I, I can't stress enough when solving um, these type of word problems, please take the time to highlight or underline the key components. So, so what I ask my students to do is read the problem at least once. Second time around, try to identify key parts of the problem. So if we look at the first thing that we've underlined, 4.5 kilometers. We know this is represented as our distance. We know 0 0.65 hours is represented by time. If you look at what the question asks, what is Carrie's average speed? It is asking us to find VAV. It's asking us to find what our average speed is. Now, once you've done that, the other thing I ask my students to do, and, and please get into this habit, is take the time to outline the information. Not just highlight it in the question, but actually list them. And here what we're going to do is we're going to list our units. So our delta D, D2, D1, delta T, T2, T1, and finally VAV. These are the, the units that we're trying to find. And we've already talked about our delta D or T. The one that we are still trying to find, and we're looking at this question, is that. So we know this is the part that we, is, our, is considered our unknown value. Now, let's fill in these, these units that we have. Well, our D2, our final distance, okay, is the school. Carry rollerblades to school. So her distance to the school is 4.5 kilometers. But from home, we're assuming she's rollerbladed from home, it is, would be represented by zero. The distance is zero because that's where she starts. So our initial distance, this is her start period. This is her finish. So we're going from start to finish, and that's going to be represented by our delta D. So 4.5 kilometers subtracted by zero keeps us with 4.5 kilometers. So that's our D value. And, and as you go on with the practice questions, you're going to realize that this is going to be negligible in terms of trying to solve it. And so is this. And all you're going to need is that actual distance, especially when you know that your initial distance is going to be at zero. Now, in terms of time, it took her 0 0.65 hours, but if she's starting from home, if she's starting from a zero point, 0 0.65 hours subtracted by zero, as we said, this becomes negligible, which means our delta T is going to be represented by our 0 0.65 hours. So what do we do now? Well, we're trying to find our VAV. So we start off with the equation. VAV is equal to delta D over delta T. 
We know that delta D stands for D2 subtracted by D1, T2 subtracted by T1. So if we substitute our numbers, notice here, so here's our D2 subtracted by our D1. Here's our T2 subtracted by our T1. And notice here, these are zeros. So they don't really matter to solve to, or, or to actually do this mathematical step. You could just jump straight to this part. 4.5 kilometers divided by 0 0.65 hours. So we get an answer of an average speed of 6.92 kilometers per hour. Now, according to the rules for multiplying and dividing, we need to keep the right number of significant digits. If we look back at our question, two significant digits, two significant digits. So the least number of significant digits in our question is two, which means that we only want those two digits. We only want two significant digits in our answer. Right now we have three, but we only want two, which means we're gonna round off, we're gonna look at the number that we're ignoring. And because that number is not a five or greater, the number 6.9 is what our answer is. So therefore, VAV is equal to 6.9 kilometers per hour. And of course, anytime you write, um, you, you solve a word problem, always end it with a therefore statement. Therefore, Kerry's average speed during the trip is 6.9 kilometers per hour. Please don't forget units. Please don't forget your final statement.